and I'm your leader today. Amen. Amen. I'm married to a woman who is around. She's here. A woman because this day's wife is a subject of clinical examination. One of my challenges this morning has been those steps. Whoever designed them, I think, was not aware that some people get old. Talk about age. Last month I turned 72. <laughs> Three weeks earlier I got my second great grandchild. <laughs> Louder. <laughs> and tomorrow will be my wife's birthday. <laughs> I don't know what age she will be, but what I know I married her when she was young and beautiful. We have come together as a family of God and in our Father's presence to offer in praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the need of the world, to ask his forgiveness for our sins and to seek his grace that through his son Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Inspire us, O oh Lord, as we come to worship. Let us. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the Almighty God. And together, Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned in our hearts and our thoughts and our words. On what we have done and in what we have failed to do, we are like that lost sheep, unable to help ourselves. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Forgive us who confess us frauds as you promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall not. May sit as we receive the absolution. If we commit sin, we have the advocate who pleads with God on our behalf, Jesus Christ. And the Lord accepts our repentance and pronounces his absolution. So may the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who promised complete forgiveness to those who repent of their sins, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The choir may take over now. There is power in the name of Jesus. That's why we have to tell him that he should prepare us to be sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Maybe you've come with many problems, many challenges on your heart, but there is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. amen.
God Church. Our first reading is uh, taken from the Gospel of Isaiah. Uh, ch oh, uh, chapter 61, verses 1 to 11. They are of our Lord's favor. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim, to, to, to proclaim the hour of the Lord's favor and the day of vagueness of our God, to comfort all who, are, who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a, spir a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks. For foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations. And in their riches you will, be, you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. Verse 8. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among nations, among the nations, and their offsprings among the people. All who see them will acknowledge that they are my people. The Lord has blessed. I delight gently in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For all, for as the soil makes the young plant come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make the righteous and praise spring up, up before all nations. Brethren, this is the word of the Lord. Second reading. Praise God, church. My second reading is from the Gospel of. Luke chapter 4, from verse 14. 
verse 14 of chapter 4, the Gospel of Luke. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and report about him went through all the surrounding country. And when he taught in the synagogues, being glorified by all, and he came to Nazareth, when he had been brought up, and all, and as he, his custom, he went to the synagogue on Sabbath, on Sabbath day. And he stood to read, he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found a place where he, it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering the sight of the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And, his, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all the people, when all he spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth, and they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, physicians heal yourself. What we have heard you did in, at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, truly I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown but in truth, I tell you, they were, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elisha, Elijah when the heavens were shut up three years and six months and a great famine came upon all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue went filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the, to the brow of the hill on which they, on which their own were built, their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. This is the word of God. Let's appreciate God for the word with a hand clap. Thank you so much, the readers. Yes, I'm going to ask us to all stand up. I mean, I will ask the media team to project the Apostles' Creed. We recite it as chaplain comes to take us through the next program. So we all stand up and we recite. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. To the glory and the honor of the Lord. Friends, we have a special service today because of the following. One, across the entire Diocese of Kampala, this Sunday has been dedicated to Jubilee celebrations. And so preachers have been sent to all churches, all churches, not all parishes, all churches, all chaplaincies. So this morning we are privileged to have Mr. and Mrs. Peter Chiza. They are our ministers. This is kindly stand up. They are our ministers. They are, the, they are the Jubilee delegates from the diocese. And Mr. Chiza happens to be the chairperson of the Central Jubilee Organizing Committee. So every question you have about Jubilee is in a position to answer because he's the chairperson of everything that is taking place. Yesterday there was a prayer walk, you might have seen, that was led by our own the assistant bishop from the cathedral to the prayer altar, the diocesan prayer mountain at St. John's Makerere. And many other things you will be able to say. Mr. Chisa, you are humbly praying that the Lord will use you to speak to us on the topic, Jubilee, year of the Lord's favor. Jubilee, year of the Lord's favor. And we will be hearing on the 21st will be the climax at All Saints Cathedral. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Father, we thank you. You're the gift of life. You're everything to us. What a day when we say Ebenezer Ototutawala. You have taken us far. For each of us, remembering the days of COVID when we were threatened, but we are seated here under your grace. And you have shown us that from your throne of righteousness, love and mercy flows. And that's why we can say that, Lord, thank you. As we share from your word, O oh God, we ask that your Holy Spirit will open up our hearts that we may receive from you. And we will be transformed into what you have destined each of us to be. In Jesus' name I've prayed. 
Amen. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How excited I am to be in Saint, Old Saint Sluiza. I remember vividly when Old Saint Sluiza was starting. I remember a very quiet hill and a, a, a determined number of people determined to establish a church here and to stand here and see you all looking beautiful and lovely and, and praising the Lord and, 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 and saying that God is good is a great privilege. May the Lord bless you abundantly as you continue to serve him and establish God's presence in this place. I will want to first of all define who I am. Because you, when you look at me, you may wonder, this gentleman, uh, is he alone? No, I'm not alone. I'm a married man. Married to a very beautiful young lady there. Um, Catherine Chiza. That is my beautiful bride. I call her my bride because we celebrated 25 years last year. We have four children, by God's grace. Two boys and two girls. So we are not redundant. We are busy fulfilling the word that says, be fruitful and multiply. And so I bring greetings also from St. Francis Chapel, where I have ministered to and prayed for the last 30 years. I minister there currently as the head of laity. And Makerere says, God bless you. And they send their greetings of love. Specifically, Reverend Onesmas greets you all, who is the chaplain at St. Francis Makerere. I would like to start by bringing a word that God put in my heart for all saints, Luisa. Do you call it a chapel? All saints chapel, Luisa. This is your word. The Lord has seen your desire to establish his presence here. He is encouraging you as a church to seek him like you have never sought him before. As priority number one. He says, seek me, you will find me. He's giving you that assurance. And he's saying that in seeking him, he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. These are not my words, my friends. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm simply a servant of the Lord who seeks to listen to what he is saying. And this is your message as a church. He knows you are building, aren't you not? He knows you are building. But he says, seek me first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything shall be. I met my senior friend. We became friends in about 10 minutes. My elder. <laughs> I saw my elder when I was uh, in university. And, and I, for some reason, I was at All Saints Cathedral. And he was very prominent at All Saints. What I noticed, he was a very active man. I, I, I mean, I, you're still active. <laughs> you're still strong. But when I met him today, I'm like, I know this gentleman. And when we exchanged pleasantries, indeed, it was obvious that his presence at that time had made an impact. Because I mean, apart from his, the color of his skin, uh, he was an actor. And when he told me what he was at all sense, he was many things. My brother, thank you for standing and, and, and continuing to serve the Lord. That is where we all want to, to, to come. I'm just 52 years. He's 72 years. Um, he looks like my brother. Um, so God has anointed him with looking young. 
but we want to say that the Lord has been good and especially to the church this year I just want us to walk through the significance of times and seasons that God presents in our lives because sometimes we take it for granted I told you we celebrated 25 years of marriage with my wife 25 years is a long time I don't know whether you agree with me but it's a long time and it was a time for us to reflect and and take stock there's a verse in the bible that says be still and know that i am god there's a moment in your life when you have to stop and be still and take stock and actually try to perceive and and, and see how good god has been in your life Brethren, the fact that you're seated in that chair, you're breathing, you are a survivor of COVID, you must give thanks to God. Because many left, many went, but you are here. Meaning that there is a purpose for you being here. And we took stock, and we could not put enough words and paragraphs to the goodness of God. And all we could say is, Ebenezer, the Lord has helped us through sickness through poverty you know we make those vows we think those vows are just to 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 let the service pass by and we and those things actually came true we experienced sickness we experienced poverty let we experienced um, anxiety the children are born when they grow up they, they become something else when they are teenagers you are dealing with something else and uh, we even were able to see um, uh, you know when you are a saved home and you are praying and believing god and then when you see alcohol step in your home you are shaken because one time my son stepped in the home and he had alcohol. The son of head of Leite, drunk. That is very shaking. But I want to say that where the, good, where the Lord is established, the Bible says we are more than conquerors. We ministered to that boy and God transformed him. So, the point I'm bringing to you is that there is a point in your life when you must stop and take stock. And the church today is at that point. And I'm going to try to share with you what does it mean when we say we celebrate Jubilee. Because I want to give you biblical perspective. Because Jubilee can be an event. When we met 25 years, we wanted to have a big wedding. You understand? Because we had been through a lot. We wanted to show the world that we are, <laughs> we deserve to spoil ourselves. But it was COVID time and we're under lockdown. And the Lord said, no. The most important thing is for you to come in my presence and just give thanks to me. You do not need a crowd of people. You do not need a reception. All I want is your offering of yourselves to come and say thank you. So we had acquired 25 years of anniversary. And we put aside all the other aspects of celebration. But it then taught us a lesson. That we are at times when God must be the focus of everything. It's not about celebration. It's not about um, event managing. It is about the praise of the Lord and the worship of the Lord. Coming into his presence with thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And so, the significance of Jubilee. Jubilee comes with a sense of anniversary. An anniversary is an event. For some it is 25 years, for some it is 50 years. For some, it is one year. There's someone here who is celebrating an anniversary. I saw a hand. Where is she? She has moved out. I don't know how many years. But every anniversary is worth celebrating in, front of the, in, in the presence of God. But I want to bring to you a special anniversary. And it has background and it has history. Remember the creation? 
The Bible says that on the sixth day, everything he had created was what? Good. We can say beautiful. But it says, it says that on the seventh day, he consecrated that day as a day of rest. As unto the what? Unto the Lord. That's why we're here. Because the Sabbath day is a holy what? It's a holy day. So the number seven starts to be a significant number in the Bible. But we also see in Leviticus chapter 25 that God also commanded that in the seventh sabbatical year, the land would do what? Rest. But as unto the Lord. The land would rest. So there would be no sowing, there would be no digging, but the land would be given time to rest. And God assures them, I will supply your, your food. And even for those who are not part of the household, from the land that has been what? Given the Sabbath rest. But God also commanded the Israelites that the year following the 49th sabbatical year or the 49th year of Sabbath should be a year consecrated as the Jubilee year. As the Jubilee year. And it was a consecrated year. Consecrated to the release of prisoners, the forgiveness of debts, the return of lands to households. Uh, what else? Do you remember? It was consecrated. That's a key thing I want us to remember. It was consecrated. So when we talk about Jubilee, there are certain things that we must put into perspective. And one of them is consecration. Consecration. The Sabbath seventh day is holy the seventh year is a time of rest but unto the lord the jubilee year is a year of consecration now what does consecration mean consecration means to be put to particular purpose and the purpose here we're talking about is for the worship of yahweh the worship of Yahweh, the worship of God. Now, you need to be excited that 50 years marks your existence, that you are alive. You need to be. In 1972, when the Diocese of Kampala was formed, I was two years old. How many years old? Two. We celebrate 50 years this year. I am 50. I don't take that for granted. Because in the 50 years, there is a whole generation. There is a whole what? Generation. My elder was there before 1972. I don't know how old you were, sir. 22. He was 22 years. He is 72 at 50. He is the few remaining. Are you agree with me? He's the few of 72 and above who are still alive of the 50 years of Jubilee. That means at certain, a certain point, my brother mentored me. And that's why I have four children. He showed me the way. That's why I have what? So in the 50 years, there's been fruitfulness and multiplication. But the core generation in these 50 years are those who have had the opportunity to live the full 50 and are going to have some more years even in the next Jubilee. Uh, are you following me? Meaning, we have a huge responsibility at 50 years of Jubilee. How many of us are 52 here? 52 to 60. 
Right. You are what you are because of what they did. Am I wrong? Now, the young generation, how many of you are 30, 30 and below? 30 and below. Some people like to be 30, honestly. <laughs> we should have more hands, right? Now, the, those will be what they will be because of us. Am I making sense? So God has given us a huge responsibility. In other words, this year of 50 years, if we pick up the spiritual meaning, God is calling us to consecrate ourselves so that we may pass on his purposes to the next generation. Because the church is defined by generations. You agree with me? If the next generation do not receive the impartation that we have, they will redefine the church. Look around you. Look at your own children. If I ask you how many of your children sing hymns, put up your hand. How many of your children sing hymns willingly? Okay. <laughs> they are redefining what they sing. But there is scripture clear in aspects of worship to God. For example, scripture says, speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Our children are in the realm of spiritual songs. And they are saying those hymns we don't understand. So who is responsible to make them understand? It is us. Church, we need to wake up. Because we are at the gate of generational impartation. And that is what we are saying in this jubilee. The key question for us today is what are we devoting ourselves to during the jubilee year as a diocese? Because how many of us will be there in the next jubilee? Can you put your hands up confidently? You will be there in the next jubilee. Right? Right? Yeah? Okay? What's happening here? I need to see. Yeah? Uh, I need to see more hands here. <laughs> right? I, I am not so sure. <laughs> because I'll be 102 years. I don't know. I, maybe I'll be online. <laughs> right? But the, the truth of the matter is, there are those who have been predestined to be part of the next Jubilee. And there are some of us who need to start looking to forward to going to meet the Lord. That's the fact. Okay. So, it is my responsibility to make sure that my children who arrive at the next jubilee are still in a state of honor to the Lord. Yeah. So, that makes us, gives us huge responsibility. And when we prayed about the jubilee, uh, as chair of the jubilee, I asked what is our theme. I asked what is our theme. And I said, look, we can have an event or we can have a spiritual prophetic journey from 50 years today to the next 50 years. And, I, I, and, 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 and we sought the Lord for a theme. And God told us, thus far, the Lord has helped us. From First Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. First Father, Lord has what? Helped us as the theme. And then God Father went on and said, the church needs to step out and evolve, not as individual churches, but as a diocese into the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. In other words, reset. 
Because we have all existed in the diocese as individual what? Churches. St. Francis is doing its own thing. Um, all Saints is doing its own thing. Uh, Chivuli Desire is doing its own thing. Um, and and we, we all have um, um, visions and missions for our own thing. And God is saying, next generation, my mission is that I am your priority. And that is why the theme is God's mission, our priority. Are you following me? That means what's going to bring us together is God's mission. Not the chaplain's mission. Not the church's, can, the council's mission. But God's what? Mission. Now, let me share with you very quickly. Yesterday, we had a march. We marched from All Saints to St. John's in Makerere. Now, when we started the march, it was like any other what? We had a band, and we had an excited following of what? People. But then, in that march, we decided we are going to proclaim the gospel, and we are going to pray. Now, we thought we were doing something which we should do. But the public response to us was, where have you been? Where have you been? A gentleman stopped one of us and said, are these from Kenya? So we asked him, no, these are Ugandan clergy from me. He said, no, it can't be. <laughs> Church of Uganda can't be on the street. He said, no. Can we show you that they're from Uganda? And they greeted them in Uganda. And they're like, where have you people been? So we walked from All Saints. We stopped at, KP, at um, Watoto. And we prayed. Moved from Watoto to Bible House. And we prayed. From Bible House to Wandegea. And we prayed. From Wandegea to Makerere Gate, and we prayed. From Makerere Gate to the lights turning into, what's that road? Sa Apollo, and we prayed. And then we reached up the other gate of Makerere, Eastern Gate, and is it Eastern or Western? Technology, yes. And we prayed, Western. Then we ended up at St. John's, but the, the impact was immense. People stopped, cars stopped, and every eye and face was saying, where have you been? People, it is no longer status quo. We love the inside of the church. We must all also go out of the church. My LC... My, uh, my defense, my, the, the, where we stay, the defense passed recently. And he said, we are having challenges with the young people. The young people are in drugs. They're in alcohol. They're in, um, in, 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 in um, what else? Uh, 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 yes, yes. All, all, they didn't mention the sexual things. But, but this redundancy, you know, I don't know. They're idle. And they're the young boys growing up to become the criminals of society. Now, his strategy was the most interesting. He told me, my strategy now, because taking them to prison has failed. Giving them chiboko has failed. However, we notice that one time we had a mission and some young people got saved. And they were transformed from idleness to selling chapati. They, had, they were starting to become productive. My challenge is that church is too much in the church. Can the reverends organize to come out and minister? Because we have seen that is where transf transformation happens. When they receive Christ as Lord and Savior. And I, told, I, I found that very what? Because this, this defense man has nothing to do with Christ. <laughs> But he has recognized that it is Christ who transforms. 
that amplifies the message that church must live and get moments of going to the community. We have had health camps in the community over several churches. Chibuli is one of them. Um, we are going to go to Katanga. And people were like, where have you been? Because we trust you. Church of Uganda is trusted. But we are not present. I'm challenging us. So the key question is what are we devoted to? Because of time, I had a lot to say, but I'll, I, I want to, 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 to wind it up quickly. Remember, there was the reign of Eli, and the ark was lost. Remember? Then there was the reign of Samuel, and the ark was returned. And the Israelites were always vulnerable to their enemies without the presence of God. We know the story. Similarly, we are at an era now, post-COVID, we cannot do without the presence of God. We cannot do without the presence of God. At every macro level, in your home, at your work, where I work, I want to tell you, there are those who work against me. These days, in our days, witchcraft used to be done secretly. These days, witchcraft is done openly. Gone are the days when you... You had to go to a corner to practice witchcraft. So we must, without fail, have the presence of God as that that accompanies us everywhere and everything that we do. So that Samuel marked the return of the, covenant, of the, of, of the Ark of the Covenant. And he does two things. When they had assembled... He confesses and says, we have sinned against you, Lord. And then he says, he leads them into a posture where they worship the Lord. And he tells them, do not stop crying out to the Lord for us, that he may rescue us from the hand of the Philistines. Do not stop what? Crying. That's why God is saying, all saints, Lord, do not stop crying to the Lord. This is time to cry to the Lord. Because the Philistines are many. There are many things coming against us. And the men of, 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 and the Israelites go into a posture of worship. And they cry out to the Lord. And the Lord answers them. What are those scriptures telling us? Those scriptures are telling us that to consecrate yourself means to put yourself in a position devoted to the worship of God. It starts with repentance. It starts with repentance. As we hand over to the next generation, we need to hand over an undefiled heritage. Are you following me? So it calls for repentance. It calls for the worship of the Lord without ceasing. And then the hand of the Lord will come and deal with the Philistines that seek to devour the next generation. People, let's be honest. Pornography is a problem with the phones that they have, right? Drunkenness, drugs. Is a problem. Addiction. We have a problem. But who's going to solve that problem? It's only the mighty hand of God that can solve that problem. But you have a part to play. And your part is to consecrate yourself and repent on their behalf that the Lord may answer and save them so that the church will grow into the glorious church that God wants it to be. Are we together? So as I bring it to a conclusion... The things we have done in this jubilee, we have deliberately made sure that they are things that relate to God's priority. The planting of trees is a priority to God. Do you agree with me? Because God made us stewards of his what? Who is going to reverse, what do we call it, this, or this um, global warming? 
Are we succeeding using the methods that we know? Are we? Who created the trees and everything about them? It's the Lord. Who has the wisdom on how we can reverse it? Who are the custodians of creation? You and me. The church. Just plant trees. For us, we will suffer from global warming, but our children shouldn't. So we are planting trees. We have done health camps because God seeks that we live in what? In health. There's a lot that needs to come with knowledge and understanding about health, even lifestyle, even how to feed and how to nutrition, etc. Who holds the, mo- the richest depository of information? In who, who, who can use it in a godly way? It's the church. In this congregation, there are engineers, there are doctors, there are architects, there are teachers. Am I wrong? But what are we using that for, right? So we have had the health camps. We are visiting the hospitals so that we can evacuate what? The sick. Christ himself says one of, part of his mission was to heal the what? The sick. We want to see the wards empty so that people can be productive. We, 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 we are going to the prisons so that we bring hope to the prisoners. Those who live will be able to come out and join the, 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 the work. And those who are, unfortunately do not live, they will at least join their maker. Sounds sad, but it's real. We need to do this, and the only people who have capacity is the church. And I want to say Kampala needs us badly. And therefore, Saint All Saints Reza with St. Francis Chapel, we need to stop our small initiatives of trying to reach a small number of people. We need to come together, join resources, join capacity, and take Kampala back. So finally, I want to say that we are determined to make sure that when we cross the 21st of this month, we will leave footprints for the next church. We want to say that mission will be our priority and joint venture mission. We want to say that outreach to our communities will be our priority. The other day we had a football match with the journalists. The journalists are very interesting people because they are available. You don't need to call them. They come. Do something, they come. So all we needed was to put a ball and they beat us eight to one. That was okay. <laughs> right? But as they were beating us, we were like, you need to get saved. God loves you. Right? When they're saying goal, we are like, yes, but God loves you. That is how creative the church has to become. Because those guys will not come to, they'll not come to church. I'm inviting you, my dear congregation, because I can, I can go on and on, but I think the labor, point I'm laboring to say is that don't you perceive that God is doing a new thing? Don't you perceive that you exist today so that you can be part of the new thing? Don't you perceive that God is saying enough is enough? I must prove to the world that I am God. And without me, you can do nothing? Don't you perceive that you are predestined? You were predestined before you were born for purposes greater than where you are? All God wants is for you to take your position and he makes use of you. Don't we perceive, may the Holy Spirit help us to perceive this. Moreover, if not for anybody, but for our children. Can you join me in the determination spirit that 
God will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And part of that are my children. People, our children must not perish. Our children must not be lied to by the devil. Our children must not be part of those that are addicted to drugs and other things. Homosexuality has stepped in like never before. Can we determine and say that as saint, say all saints who are, we, or me, uh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May the Lord, good Lord, bless you. I'm inviting you on the 21st. Come to all saints. Come and let us together agree that we are walking to the next 50 years with a different mindset and attitude. And God's mission must be our priority. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's appreciate him once again with a hand clap. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have been challenged to step out, out of these four walls of the church and go and do ministry. Amen. So let's bow our heads in prayer just to respond. Yes, Heavenly Father, the message is very, very clear. You created us as a special people. People you want to dominate, to have dominion, to rule, and to express their gifts and talents, all to the glory and the honor of your name. Father, we are your holiness. We are your splendor. We are the excellency. We are the perfections of your work. And so, Lord, we present ourselves this morning, weak as we are, we ask you, O oh God, that in our weaknesses you will strengthen us. Forgive us where we have been so negligent, where we have taken things for granted. But this morning we are vulnerable. And we ask you that, Lord, you will revive us. Revive us, O oh God. We seem to know, but we are weak. And so for each one of us, I want to ask you to ask the Lord to strengthen you. Just be honest. Ask the God, give me strength to obey the call. Give me strength to exercise the gifts that you have given me. Give me strength. On your head, you seem to know what to do, but somehow you don't do it. And so you need strength. Father, we ask you to strengthen us as a chapel. Strengthen us as Church of Uganda. There is so much potential in us. And like we have been challenged in your word, where have we been? Where have we been? Lord, we are here. We are here. And we ask you to strengthen us, help us to be relevant in our communities, help us to be relevant where we are serving. And we trust that, Lord, through you, we'll be able to wake up, we'll be able to rise up as an army that you have prophesied about way back. You said, I will build my church. Lord, we respond to that statement. We are the church. We ask you to build us. Build us through the strategies that have been laid and help us to accomplish those strategies that the church will be strong, the church will, will rise up and, and influence the communities and that your, your, your name will be glorified. And so, Lord, we, 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 we stand in faith, believing that, Lord, what you purposed will surely come to pass in our lives. We thank you for this jubilee season. Cause us to be a part of this celebration. Cause us to be... Uh, a part of this uh, fruitfulness of Jubilee, cause us to be a part of the cause that you have you are put forward. We thank you, we bless you, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. Let's give a hand of praise to God once again. Thank you so much. And uh, I believe the word of God is not in vain. It's going to do its work. Amen.